It is a strong map for them, but it was the very first map that Cloud9 played, so we'll have to take it round by round. They lost 5-16. to 16. They had lost on CT side, but I actually analyzed this on my channel as well. And at the CT side, I wanted to see how the 3-12 to 12 happened, and I thought they brought a lot of good ideas to the CT side, so I'm very excited to see that this is the side they start on, and we'll see if they fixed anything or if Mouse Sports will uh, continue to show us that this was an incredibly strong veto from Kerrigan. Time to find out. We've seen Cloud9 improve on an individual level since their first showing. And now we revisit the same battlefield where that blunder took place. We walk in with eyes open. Beretta's in position for Alex. Floppy's going to get gushed, and he draws the players into him. Now the Berettas look to thread them, but... It's Beamass with the kill here. Floppy's going to still be able to stand his ground. Another headshot from Floppy. The Executioner. All three kills thus far from Cloud9. And Woxic's aggression out from Apartments was oh. meant to kill Chris J. He will die to the grenade of Mezzi. So all good for Cloud9. Four members standing at the end of the first pistol. Uh, not a bad pistol. Doesn't mean a whole lot. About, like a lot of these rounds going to come down to who wins Banana. Yakinder said in an interview that this is the hardest map to prepare at the top level, and that's why they picked it versus Cloud9. They felt like it was going to be an easy map for them. He proved it in the server, and now we'll see if the, first of all, if that's actually true. If it, if it, if it is going to take a lot of reps for Cloud9 to get good at this map, surely, you know, Mouse Sports, if any team, will test them based on what we've seen so far. Yeah, I'm very, very, very excited for this first half, so let's see how it continues to play out. It's the test of the synergy, you know, Floppy and Alex playing together as a tag, I guess, on this round. Seeing how this setup works out. I can see why Floppy, he's such, he's a player that doesn't need a lot of, of cover, if that makes sense. He's always so very confident when it comes to full executes. He's very good at standing close to choke points. I imagine he'll be a pretty strong B anchor with some time. As he's going to let one, yeah, I was going to say, slip into the site if he's not careful. Finds Rops. Opening kill, the wave of Cloud9 flash to the top of the banana. Floppy, well, kind of blinded. Not sure exactly what's coming his way with the combination of that smoke in his face. So he forfeits control of it. And this does give Mouse Sports a chance to get one step closer to the site itself. A headshot from the Deagle would have been great for Mouse Sports, but Floppy again looking to deliver. Essetag's able to get an assist in the mix. Floppy goes down without the ace, but another 3k from him two rounds deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, peaked so confident. It looked like the one Deagle was coming, but he was a bit faster to clicking with that fall miss. And now we'll be forced to buy a better gun and use his remaining money to do so. Here it is. A small little floppy highlight reel to wrap up round two. Good hold to kick things off. Round number three, not much to work with. Mouse sports, what do we have to bring? And again, it's, it's going to be a lot of paying attention to what it looks, both from the TNCT side on Banana. Floppy goes one for one. B mass trades. Mezzi trying to come in with a flank. His life is now in jeopardy as he can get pushed from both sides. Awkward position. Alex had his back, but Frozen will punish Alex. This has opened things up dramatically. The doors swing wide open in this round for Mouse Sports. They are low on HP, but with this many players, they can spread the map in unique ways. They're going to over... Whelm the halls and put a lot of pressure now on Woxic to multi-frag. Deagle's good for two and almost the third, but Frozen's going to ice him out. It's Essatag's turn to try and clutch this. Rops 19 health, Frozen on 100, MP9 in hand. Now, of course, both players spotting one another. Rops, he's trying to come in from behind. Essatag better clear his flank right now or get around the corner, but he's still exposed. This should be an easy kill for Rops, and he lines up the headshot before pulling the trigger. Mouse Sports with a robbery of a round. They took a bit of a risk, of course. They run down mid. It's not an uncommon thing to do. It's not a wrong thing to do on CT side, but the execution isn't right there. When Mehdi doesn't get his first kill and the smoke was there to stop him, it became very awkward where he could get flanked from both sides, and Alex could, wasn't covering down deep stairs in the best way possible. He had to worry about someone peeking him as well, so the whole thing was just a bit messy. It's going to expedite the process for Mouse Sports coming right back in with a buy. 
Wow, the money's actually pretty good for Cloud9. Surprised to see that. Yeah, all things considered. Three M4s, Fomus, and a decent amount of nades. No kit on the play, though, just in case retake comes in. Don't you forget it. This would be a landmark victory for Cloud9 to prove they can win on Inferno. But it already looks like they've been tested in a big way. Regains vision in mid. Floppy is able to shave a player off with that MP9. There are definitely more members of Mouse Sports just there for him waiting. But they actually back off a bit. And when I say that, I mean both teams. Moving a piece over to the B site is Cloud9. Rops still from Boiler. No sports had retreated from the smoke and the off chance that maybe Cloud9 decide to try and push through it. Not the case, however. This really makes sense both ways with Cloud9 having five players alive. Spreading the map a bit more evenly. Mouse Sports coming back into the three player setup. There's a good peek from Floppy. He'll find the correct timing. The flash he eats afterwards will displace his aim enough that B Mass can trade him out. But it's still a three on four, and the rotations will start to come over from the CT side as well. Challenging lane pushes Mezzi into an important position. He's playing off the side of the smoke. He also has Alex committed to the small pit. Seven seconds left. Alex comes out of this. We've got BMAS planting in the backside. Alex going to take down his teammate Ooh, okay. and continues the spray for a third one. A third round even for Cloud9 here. Mouse Sports hitting the blunt force of Cloud9's A hold. Wow. That was a very, very nice spray transfer there. Super well done. It was like he's playing on an iPad. Just clicked on a different part of the screen. Perfect adjustment over into the cold box and yeah all three kills not a lot of time left on the clock when all was said and done so even though mouse boards pulled off that eco i think they're probably a bit surprised by just how much money cloud nine had lots of guns here on that that last round and um yeah i mean it's because of i guess the low losses that we saw coming out of the first and second round a buy-up will come in response though for mouse boards not quite as good but on the t side it doesn't need to be quite as good if your rifles if your few rifles go in front they manufacture those first couple of entries. That is the round over and done with. Rotations are very difficult on Inferno. Map gets quite P-sided the lower numbers you get. Frag timing's decent. BMAS gets softened up. Chris J's inside of the site, but Mezzi, he's got himself a double. Kerrigan from the hay bales, only able to answer with one. So as the bomb gets dropped on short side, well... Rops sent in to try and pick up some pieces. I love that. Um, I love that execute. The flashes they used, the continuation flashes, they supported Chris J so that he didn't even have to clear anything. They kept going to po one final one to pop Ooh. over the top of his head. <laughs> An actual collateral with that deagle. Headshot on floppy. He'll, caught, he'll get caught jumping. And it's a nice hold overall from Cloud9. But well, let's take a look at the execute again. Everybody can has to kind of look away. Mezzi is forced to talk, but Chris J gets all the way onto the site without even having to fight anybody. If he had the clarity of mind to clear that back hay bale, or the, uh, the back of the wagon, he would have been able to not only get the kill, but maybe tumble it on, tumble it on for the rest of his teammates who are coming in with worse guns. But Cloud9 survived another great start for them and potentially a freebie to follow it up. Chris J's scout in position. A little bit of utility pressure here. Chris J's trying to stick it to them. Ooh, but Floppy, he goes ahead and gets a team kill. Interesting turn of events at the start of this one. Of course, Mouse Sports just looking to maximize on it. They don't really have much to invest anywhere else, so why not try to go where the ball started rolling? Frozen with Chris J's scout connects further damage into Alex. He's in the 1v3. CT's dead around him, could pick up a gun, could even run back and just hit that. That right there that nice. opens things wide because Mezzi's here on arch side and oh, 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 had Frozen found another scout shot, things really get interesting. Alex had been tagged down to like 20 HP. Floppy's team kill, get out of my way. He's just a monster on banana, he has to kill everything, even his own teammates. And he has just been racking up the ADR here. Look at this hold, really fantastic stuff, whenever they've come in his direction. And I, I kind of like how they were just... <laughs> oh. 
Never saw that on North. Yeah. <laughs> I love how they're just kind of tethering off each other, peeking, changing up with Alex and Floppy. I think it's good to fight for Banana in whatever sense that means. You know, not just necessarily falling back, waiting for a flash and then coming out, letting the T's get comfortable. I think you have to be a little bit more wild than that. As the map has gotten a bit more T-sided at the higher level, it's because of how, how, how the nades have just become so good for the T's to try to get map control and disrespecting that by staying fluid is important. Tag heading back to the B site. Woxic was here alone just moments ago. Nades starting to come in this direction from most ports. I got plenty of smokes. Could go for the fake execute, try and peel the player off of A. It's just ROPs inside of Boiler. You eventually start to expect this. So Alex on high alert. Now Mouse Sports having lost that A player. They're just going to look to sink themselves into the B site. Kerrigan sees a man jump behind new box. That's Woxic. He's got Essatag and Floppy on a spawn to try and help him, but now with the site cleared, Kerrigan, he's unleashed! And Mouse Sports, with three kills across the kill feed, are suddenly in a comfortable position, or they would be if they had more health to work with. Alex, oh. challenging from Khan, takes two heads off, and it's all on Chris J. But I mean, we all know this guy can clutch. And they may think he's on the back of the site. They make a fatal error. Now it's down to the one versus one. And Chris, he can just play this time. Bomb ticked beyond the halfway point. Mezzi, he's starting to stick this down to the final second. Chris J. Oh, no. Wow. Oh, my God. He got the shot off. I think even the shot was a little bit too late. Tried to come back for it. Was a bit too far to come up for the bait. Mezzi... He really had no choice but to stick. I don't want to try to say that these situations are black and white, right? Of course, you have to play the player just as much as you play, like, the objective best solution. But a spot like that, it seemed like, you know, Mezzi, he's going to be more... F he's going to be more encouraged to stick that bomb than he is to fake it. And, um, yeah, Chris, I think just by a narrow margin, misses his window to get that shot in. And even with the wall bang, it's not quite enough. So almost wins back the 1v2. But uh, when we talk about Alex, that was nasty. He killed both in construction, both forward facing, waiting for him to peek. Absolutely clinical. The mechanics of an engineer. Six to one, the exact same start for Cloud9 as we saw on Vertigo. And mouse boards, they showed us they could adjust and adapt and brought it back and people started firing off. But right now, the kills are very high for Cloud9 and not very high for mouse boards overall. Not too many close situations to look back on. better and we've got the full pacifist setup here from cloud nine inside of B they'll give up top banana smoke grenade off of the wall let's see if Alex can contest this he throws down an incendiary and sticks in front of the smoke then all of a sudden there's an additional one and walks it comes knocking from short Rob's answers immediately. Always in the boiler. Minute on the clock. 4v4. Hmm. No utility left for Mouse Sports at all. I think without arch control, they're kind of smoked out of the situation. F CT is wide open. This is awkward. Nice oh, wow. Alex yeah. throws that one from balcony. Floppy primed for it. I was wondering where he's going to get that control from. And look at Alex as well. He's taking a liberty here, walking all the way through the halls. As a tag playing in a retake position, might take one peek here. They line up. Easy pickings for Essatag. Then the Molotov comes in as well. Three kills for him. Cloud9's logo on fire. This is just like the start of Vertigo. Except we're already eight rounds deep. He's actually got monster, monster, answer. monster spray control, man. Essatag yeah. has amazing spray control. This is also a nice play from Alex. And something I also noted in the demo I watched is just his utility usage was pretty much optimal. Like the entire time. Well, well, well. Will we get a situation of traded map picks? That is the question. 
mouse boards again, uh, or sorry, Cloud9 again. Absolutely horrific performance versus Virtus Pro. Three to 12 rounds on the CT side. Already looking better versus a stronger team. No sports do have the tools they need to execute on this A site. We start to see all that get thrown over the top. Blinded is Mezzi. Inside of the site was BMAS. Woxix able to use the op up close. And unfortunately for Mouse Sports, they've got Rops sectioned off in the apartments. The other two players for the T site out middle, and Floppy's getting all the closer to this flank. So Curious. if they decide to try and turn tail, he should knock them down unquestionably. Curious Kamari down at the T steps. Kerrigan falls on the arch side, and this does just leave Rops. 19 HP versus four. We're looking at an 8 1 score line from Cloud9 CT side. Improvements on Inferno. He's the hitman. Perfect pre aims. Ult ultimate crosshair placement. That one was coming. But instead, it might be coming home. There's Mezzi with the final kill. Consolation frag from Rops. Questions, questions, questions. What do Mouse Sports want to do? Well, the one success that they've had was getting into B after the exec. So maybe trying to vie for top banana control uh, again, even if it's off a of delay, if they want to, don't want to go right away, might be an interesting solution here for Mouse Sports. And that round they actually lost with a 1v2. They got into really strong positions on the B side as well. Just walks and Mezzi on this A site early. Rops back into the apartments doing what he does. Smokes currently on both sides of the banana. Tries to use the flash to convince Woxic off of it, but I mean, easy peek right in straight thereafter. Kerrigan now going to try and lead this charge up Arch. Woxic near omnipresent, but frozen. He will find two headshots. A double kill at the bottom of mid as the B players go charging behind them and Arch is already under the control of Mouse Sports. That B site cleared by two kills in mid. Cloud9 getting a bit ahead of themselves, perhaps. Yeah, we'll have to watch that back to see how that went down. It's probably pretty nice shots from Frozen. Of course, he can be counted on to do that every once in a while. And uh, of course, as Alex, he realizes immediately that they're going to, with CT control, just have a free round if he doesn't make a Hail Mary play, runs into CT. I actually don't think it's a bad move by him, but of course, mouse sports are a bit too careful in that position. The other option was just to think to save right away, but um, there was a chance if, if mouse sports got a bit too hasty that he punished them for leaving. But either way, this is just simply about Frozen shutting down the two B players. As soon as he sees the name tags, he knows the site's opened up. And that's the long and short of it. <laughs> the worry on Mither. My goodness, my man. I don't know what's going on. Here, let's let's check it out. Let's see what happened here with Frozen. Hopefully, let's we'll take a look. Oh, he just comes back to take a peek. Oh my God, he's gonna take another peek here. Oof, those are just beautiful shots, right? That should have been a trade, 100%. Yep. Dead to rights. They thought they had him, especially that little delayed peak behind it, right? As the tag starts hitting a little bit of damage, but then gets snapped on. A second round for Mouse Sports. Thank goodness for Frozen. He's lift the spell for now. Woxic, gonna try and set that off up in mid. Good gamble. We've got a fight over towards Banana. Esetag looking at the dirt and Chris J. Well, laying on the hurt, at least for the first one. Frozen and BMAS also coming in with kills. We've got a near team ace. It would just take Kerrigan to find this last one. B site completely clear. Rob's doubles down and Mouse Sports third round now. Oh my, oh my. How the turntables. They had the CTs tried to pull back all the momentum. This is one where you get caught with your pants down. They This, this is... A round that can strip you of your dignity, right? After you win a round, they rush down mid, they rush down B, they fight you, they stomp you. But instead, Cloud9 lose on that. And they, they, it's a round where you don't use a lot of utility. You don't play meticulous Counter-Strike. You really just 
roll the dice in a big way. And if you're not rewarded, you end up in a situation like this. No opportunity to save. Nobody used all of the grenades that they bought into the round. You're back on USPs. Economically speaking, that could be a tragic round to look back on if you're Cloud9. Mouthports, on the other hand, they recognize the opportunity that's at hand. Kerrigan's going to spot the stack here and is going to try to grab them when they're most uncomfortable. As a tag, very nice to get that USP headshot. Another one coming out of the graveyard stairs. Rops going to very quickly put an end to Floppy, but hey, he at least got one kill. That's the second, of course, for Cloud9, doing something with just the USPs. Very clear out of the gates, you know, they had uh, creepy crawlers just crouch walking, talking, and probably just trying to figure out a solution here to make sure that Mouse Sports don't barrel back into this T side, because considering it was a 7-1, we're now looking at an 8-4, and yes, the money is back in the pockets of Cloud9, enough to justify a buy, but this T side absolutely warming up now, and it's not just one incredible top-heavy carry, no. It's everybody piecing together their frags. And remember, Floppy, he is 17 and 9 at the moment. Holy hell, 155 Ooh. ADR. Ooh, ee, ah. Ooh, ee, ah. Ooh, ee, ah. He obviously has a couple of uh, eco mowdowns as well. Don't want to talk of, out of both sides of my mouth here. Frozen had kind of a similar thing going on, but he also has a good amount of rifle kills on the hold. And hey, he did it with a Thalmus. It's all about stopping him going into B. Wow, an amazing entry here from Kerrigan. He never fails to impress these days with some of these opening kills. Wasting zero time getting into the CT spawn. Oh, walks like he's getting caught off guard here, isn't he? He's yep. running into this angle. Chris oh. K will punish him and maybe pick up his favorite gun. No, he's still holding on to the AK, trying to make some progress. And I think he's just going to use himself as a sacrificial lamb, right? He can get some information. He's ahead of the pack. If he's too close to his teammates, they might be able to uh, or fail the trade. He'll drop a smoke behind. And, oh, there's the peak. Wow, he baits Floppy into swinging out. I mean, he read that with prescience. Huge plays from Chris J. Dude, I thought Cloud9 were climbing this mountain. Looked like they had the two-hand grip on Mouse Sports. But suddenly, they begin to slide. And I feel like now we're in a bit of a free fall. Obviously, last round with just pistols, not expecting much. But this was the buy they were trying to get back underneath them and well i don't have the best memory but i can already recall that turning point on vertigo it looks so good from cloud nine out the gate the same way it did here on inferno yes this time it was that much better as they got up to their eight round count but dude mouse sports they could very well finish this half eight seven yeah. and i wouldn't be too shocked and we know what they did when they swapped sides on vertigo that is massive momentum absolutely two players for cloud nine survive at the end of this four up for mouse sports that's money in their back pockets it's going to be guns to the end of days yeah. for their offense no cloud nine they're bringing with potential they've shown really good results they got good so incredibly fast like such a impressive win last night versus complexity i think that was the big one but of course they're they're lacking some polish, right? They're missing a little bit of turtle wax to get that shine. And in certain spots, there are certain things that could be improved, of course. Um, but still, numerically, they're holding up pretty good. Early start could mean a lot for them going into T-side, and we have yet to see what they have to offer over there. But once again, Kerrigan manufacturing these kills over and over again, consistently. Almost feels like he's sometimes creating them out of thin air. Really? Kerrigan's a damn magician. But Alex calls his bluff. Four versus four. Heavy damage versus Alex and Esetag, the two players currently handing on to the rifles for Cloud9. And more smokes in the face of Mouse Sports create a tidbit of hesitation. Rops, though, he's going to find that flank yet again. Esetag not waiting for the T's to make a commitment, but rather just trying to slide in with some kind of success story. Robs with another kill. Alex, just the one. And then here comes Floppy, bouncing up from the graveyard, but not bouncing up as much as most sports have. Six rounds on the scoreboard, five of them in a row. They are on fire for the final round of the first half. This is more like what happened versus Virtus Pro. When they were taking the early fights, they were losing their duels straight up in the open on Banana, which is kind of an interesting thing because they're losing their duels a lot to Kerrigan, who, I mean, credit to him. He's hitting a lot of first bullet headshots, but it's not, it's, it's of course a little bit surprising considering, you know, the talent that he's going up against. I mean, that's just, just, just want to put it out there. Um, 
Now, for what that means for this half, it's pretty decent. Again, credit to them for pulling back the end of the half. You have to really shine a spotlight on that fact. The adjustments are there. The confidence is still there. And look, more open. Another opening kill he gets. I, what, are, what is his opening kill percentage? Killer's going to have to call on Maniac for these stats. Robs will get a frag of zone. Yeah, but he gets traded out by Woxic. Let's see if the op can stop this rampage from Mouse Sports. Frozen doesn't even need to see. As he still had Woxic in the crosshair before that pop flashed. Flash popped. Cloud9. Not looking too good here at the end of the CT side. Mouse Sports absolutely turning it upside down, and a lot of it because of Kerrigan's openings. This is exactly what happened to Heroic on Train. Mm -hmm. And to Cloud9 last map. Yep. Spot on. Damage through the smoke. That could be enough. I mean, they've got nowhere else to go, nothing else to do. Let's see it, Floppy. 1v3, shut down by Chris J. Mouse Sports with a phenomenal close to the T side. Six rounds in a row. How many yes, more thanks, will they post Sports have something to say? <laughs> Six rounds in a row. Chris J. feeling the heat. Yeah, he's putting up the, uh, he's unzipped, okay? He's fully unzipped. That's going to be the Chris J documentary, fully unzipped. The chains are out. He's pretending there's a crowd behind him. I love it. He probably doesn't tie his shoelaces. Yeah. You know, we know, like, and players on land. Remember Actually, yeah, they'd walk out, no shoes on, because everyone took their shoes off and they were playing. Pretty sure Chris J doesn't have shoelaces. It's a style thing. It's a fact. Well, see if they can lace up the next half. And they did really good in the second portion of the first half. Okay, test here for Cloud9 on the T side. They not really get a chance to show us a T side yet so far on this map, so we'll see what they can do here. We're all here to learn. Three players in position for Mouse Sports on the second pistol. Grenades exchanged. As the tag looking for that entry. Who's going to fall first? Frozen at the hands of Floppy. Kerrigan just coming through that smoke to chip one back, but Mezzi blinded through the smoke finds Kerrigan. All of a sudden, it's B-Mass with the one and done. Robs comes in from Banana. He's looking to combine with Chris J, but he gets shut down. Mess Sports looking like they're going to tie things up at eight. Chris, what can you deliver? They are showing him absolutely nothing. Very patient post-plant from Cloud9, and the moment they know he's in the open, they're all going to sweep out for him, and Alex making sure it goes down easy. Cloud9, two-round lead. Nicely done from Alex with those kills and Mezzi catching Frozen off. I feel like Frozen is brimming with confidence right now and just waiting for that moment to really explode. But, you know, catching a bullet like this, that is going to turn your plans around. Actually, it's Kerrigan to die in the smoke, excuse me. And then Alex to clean up the rest, Chris J out. Whoa! Didn't know they had earthquakes in London. I have a running theory that Mezzi might be Maudi. Chris J just absolutely destroyed that chicken. Get him out of the way. Yeah. I can see the Maudie. Right? He's got the Maudie stash a little bit. Mezzi, Maudie, you change a couple letters. Have you ever seen them in the same room at the same time? Don't mean to be a different times. conspiracy theorist, but Kerrigan builds his gun in time to try and lay down the damage. Walks a Canesta tag, however. They're going to clear out this B site, and Cloud9 have done it yet again. Running into B early. Cost them a lot of damage, though. I'm curious to see whether or not they would find such a success story had their opponents been better equipped. Refurbishing the smoke and catching Rops on his walkout. b just going to tuck tail and get out of dodge. That's Cloud9 to the double digits. Another strong start at the s beginning of the half. How long can they run with this? Yeah, it's kind of a for-what-it's-worth moment. Nothing is known yet until we get to the first rifle. That is the only thing that is relevant right now. Damn, that's a cool skin. Yeah, bangs. You gonna buy one? Nope. In between games, Connor's just sitting here on Steam buying guns off the market. <laughs> the arms dealer. You know, you don't have to tell everybody. The other day he bought a stiletto and sold it back in 10 seconds. He said he had buyer's remorse. It's a thing! He's just trying to give Gabe as much money as possible. <gasps> like a $20 rebate. Did you see that? No, I didn't see it. Frozen teleported. Oh. We have to get that up again. 
When there's time, please. I did say earlier that if anybody can teleport... I can't remember who I said it was. <laughs> Damn. I don't think it was Frozen. I don't remember who you said it was, actually. Art. Oh, it was, yeah, it was a different... Oh, yeah, it was Art. Oh, it was a different game. Right. I wish you had seen it. You would you'd really enjoy that. Just Always wait. Thought Frozen Just wait. Was the Brazilian art. Get your expectations nice and high. Three players here on Boiler side. B Mass inside of it. Chris J on the other end, but it's B site, B site, B site. Cloud Nine working it for three rounds in a row, and that should make the difference in the score line. Spray down from Floppy and Mezzi. Everybody's dying on the side of Mouse Sports, but that's to be expected. It's now that they bounce back with guns that we have more questions. Map three on the horizon. Hmm. Oh. This will be the the round that shows us. Not the not the most well rounded buy here for Cloud9 with the you know UMP on S attack, but they've built up such an economy. So they can take a small risk here. Looking to make a success out of it. What could be a bonus, but an absolutely imperative round for Mouse Sports to win to save their own economy. God, they're jealous. They want to siphon some of this cash out. Oh, they coming through that? Yes, they are. Looking close. Frozen, are you ready? Smoke fades. Frozen, easy pickup. And the second kill is his as well. Just serving as an anchor behind these sandbags, but he gets double mollied into the open, and then all of a sudden, we've got Cloud9 back with three kills. Woxic taking down two, but look at the HP left over. They've got a minute on the clock, and two players from Mouse Sports to try and take this away from them. B site for the fourth round in a row. Well, that should not have gone so well. Frozen with the opening two kills, bomb drop behind enemy lines, and not a team nearby to trade out. However, with the amount of HP remaining, mm -hmm. wouldn't be half surprised if Mouseports pulled this off, if there's anyone that could do it. Cinderi goes deep. That one's on the money. Gonna push a player into the open. Flash was meant to save him. Two kills from BMAS. Oh, it's all three. They clear them out of the corners. Perfect Molotov. And that Molly, it actually gives away the information because the flashbang comes from the dark corner. And well, the orange peak was one of the first players to die. So, susses out the situation. Frozen, he was the guy that kicked it all off. An easy kill versus Estatag. This is a bit discombobulated with but the way that they come in. out. Uh, because, okay, they punish both, which is great, but they're so sep separated here. Coming into the coming into the top of Banana. You don't want to have your bomb be the first one out. Yep. You could potentially change course in the round, like go back to mid control or something like that. It really forces your hand and calls for those rotations. But again, that residual damage that came after the fact also affected the retake spot for the two mouse sports players. And they didn't even know, you know, how much damage was dealt. So they're feeling really good about that 2v3 retake, brimming with confidence now. And again, I think Frozen is about to show us a, a, a pretty standout performance here on the CT side. It's him and Chris J sitting in the B site. Molly. And a smoke. And a boost over top of it. They're coming back. Yeah. Ooh, and it doesn't even cost them. Chris J, oh, not able to get away from it. Alex, good continuation on the spray down. Well, they'll go back. Arch is open. What do they know about the setup now that would... Like, I mean, here's one thing. If they're scared of B, of course, then a rotator who's going to come through is the Arch player. So this might be a clue for them. The remaining two CTs, they could be anywhere. They could be in a double uh, A setup on the site. They could be doubled up in pit like they are. This is the hard part to suss out. But at this moment, no site is that bad to take. Flash towards the pit, drops, Ooh. blinded, not even going to stop him for a second. There is still a player, however, above. Another repeat's going to cost Rops his head. BMAS down beneath it, man, advantage for Mouse Sports, held onto with the bomb now on the corner. Poor Alex has nowhere to go but back to the depths of which he came. 
Time is the issue. That's the ninth round for most sports, and their CT side already starting to solidify as they win two consecutive rounds after three in a row from the offense. It's a big first kill. The tactic on the boost on the logs to take out Chris J. That's supposed to be one that Esetag grabs, but Chris J punishes it. Some really good reactions here by him, and he forces their aim to be displaced, making them turn with the initial flash on the retake. And this is great cohesion in the pit between BMAS and Rops to lock it down for the first two kills. Everything after that is a bonus. They really set their team up to win that round with those first two. Three in a row. Mouse are looking for three in a row. Within two at tying this up. Things start to get a bit more difficult here for Cloud9. Kerrigan standing in the open. If they all charge him right now, nope, he's going to get around the corner. He's got a bit more cover to play with, and not to mention Frozen to try and support him from Arch. Flash goes out. Frozen looks to go in. Hmm. Little gentleman's agreement. Some shots exchanged, but everybody's still standing. Kerrigan, oh my goodness. He's going to go peeking into middle. Two players tucked back around mid, and Floppy offers his back. Nobody there to trade this. Kerrigan scaring them away from the brackets. What a punish. And the bomb lingers a little longer because Alex, well, he's still by the apartments and he's thinking about maybe bursting out or even just selling this fake. He keeps two sets of eyes peeled towards him and leaves his three teammates to go challenge B where Frozen and Chris J stand 40 seconds. Feels like he just waits for that moment when they're just going to start talking about things. Just to take what's like looks like a random peek after Frozen shows face and falls back from CT. And then Kerrigan gets over in time before the commitment comes in. Frag grenade goes deep onto Coffin. That's good for half of Chris J's health. And he is only working with the MP7. Kerrigan's damage lines a couple up, but it's Frozen with a headshot. 15 seconds on the clock. A player jumping over. Frozen, labored spray. It's Alex to get a double. Kerrigan could challenge. He swings all the way out. Sprays for the bomb plant, but can't stop it. Alex is on a tear. Finally hits the dirt. It's BMAS back in with another B take. Can he close it? Esetag in the open. Looking for the distanced headshot. But now he's going to take to the top of the barrels, and that bomb is halfway gone. BMAS getting all the closer. Rops rounds the corner first to fall, and BMAS does it all. Three mass, all three inside of the B retake once again, stopping them from overtaking construction with the double peak. Yes, they're low, partly because of Kerrigan spray, but still making sure to get both those kills, absolutely imperative. And this was the one. Frozen had that for free, it looked like. And then Alex turned it into another kill or two. It, it looked like Alex was going to come into B again and be the reason they're able to win, but that's not the case. And you can see what's really tough. I mean, with the amount of things that go on in one single default, the amount of utility that needs to be thrown, there are all these moments for Cloud9 look a little bit uncomfortable. It feels like they're kind of learning as they go. Big aggression, just trying to take down these upgraded pistols. Now the respect been thrown out the window, as have the first three corpses. Cloud9 down to Floppy and Acid Tag just as quickly as they can run up mid. One kill comes in for Cloud9, but that's it. Mouse Sports, they're tying this game at 11 rounds apiece. Things get absolutely terrifying here for Cloud9. That one maneuver from, from Kerrigan to just mosey out back to mid from CT delayed after Frozen peaks from CT spawn and then gets a kill. It just feels like that just rocks Cloud9. Like that's the one moment of respite they had in the match where they cleared top bracket control, they chilled, they were gonna go into something else and then he just got into the middle of it. And that is the continued impact that Kerrigan has had across the series. Feels like his confidence to put himself out there has been rewarded time and time again. Oh, they're going to hear that. Oh, that's going to result in a kill as well. Okay, and it activates the push from Rops. Absolutely clinical with the double spray down. He ha never over flicks this guy. You give him one second to turn around and he will destroy you. Now it's going to fall into Frozen and Kerrigan to just lock down these last two kills. 
One smoke for Esetag, a triple set of flashbangs. But they're within a smoke from their opponents. This is going to be five rounds in a row for Mouse Sports if they can close the 5v2. Sure enough, Frozen finds one through it. Poor Esetag being hunted, trying to fight his way out despite being boxed in. Takes a second headshot, but Mouse Sports are on fire and Mouse Sports are in the lead. I don't know what the answer is for Cloud9. I think maybe to remedy the situation instead of defaulting to too much map control, maybe trying one thing and moving into an execute or doing something faster, like something to do with halls. I'm not sure if that's been part of the game plan in practice. I'm sure they went over all of the details of, of what it means to take top mid, take B, but right now it feels like that's too much work for them and Mouse Sports are finding so many gaps They're all over the place. Chris J was such an easy one this last round. Kerrigan with many. And again, not just on Inferno, but their experience is starting to shine through. This doesn't feel like that situation with complexity on Dust 2 where they were able to come back. That one, you could kind of see it more. This one, it feels like mouse ports are just getting a depth grip on this half and not really letting loose. It's a little delayed at each start. You know, Cloud9 really like to wiggle, fidget and fight for it. Mouse sports just kind of stalking their prey before they start killing it round after round. BMAS double. Good flashbangs in mid, but Kerrigan dunks it onto Alex. Esetag's gonna challenge up Banana, but the poor guy gets quick scope by Chris J. And Mouse Sports now two rounds in the lead, three rounds away from grabbing that spot at the finals. How impressive would that be? After beating Heroic again, taking Nuke, uh, three out of 20 times Heroic have lost Nuke. Mouse Sports did it to them yesterday, and they came in off of EG's seed to replace them and were then immediately the favorites to win. Mouse Sports beat them out. Now they're taking Cloud9, potentially 2-0 after Cloud9 come off a hot 2-1 victory over Complexity. And we'll see if that's actually going to be the case. But they're trying to keep the momentum going. BMAS pushing down mid, doing incredible damage, maybe invaluable damage here to Mezzi and Woxic, rocking the T-side default immediately. Yeah. And Rops will also, off of this information, go for a push. Until Cloud9 can end this spree of round wins, it is absolutely Mouse Sports who we need to talk about as this heavy hitter. Oh man, the last guy you want clearing out halls and flanking you is Rops. Yep. If anybody is going to make a flank v valuable, it's him. And Chris J, he's not shy either. They're going to delay this commitment. This allows Rops to really get in position. And with Chris J killing the players on Banana, Rops just taps into the back of the head of Esetag. Another fight to try and take this 22 health and three more players lie ahead the silver lining is there's only one on this a site if he can somehow get out from balcony best frozen and bomb plant then maybe he hangs on here but it's not the favorable duel he would hope for and mouse sports now two rounds away again another game where it was such a strong start to the half but mouse sports starting to outclass them chris jay's turning up he had a really bad first map Definitely looking a lot more solid now, a lot more confident. And we've got one enough energy on this one fan cam to fill an entire Discord. Yo, for a second, I thought that was Frozen. I was I like, <laughs> bro, you haven't won yet. <laughs> wow. All right, that makes more sense. That's what you love to see. Well, all right, Robs is, man, if Robs is not They're being not, shy with these hall pushes, he's going in again. Dude, they are so confident now. Oh, They're almost, it doesn't matter. Yeah, they're boiling over. Even with a couple players lost, Kerrigan's here to pick up some pieces. It was damage done. Kerrigan is wounded, and they've offered the M4 over because of these aggressive plays into the apartments, but considering how easy it was back to back to back rounds, no reason for Mouse Sports to really let off the gas pedal. They'll have plenty of time to try and squeeze that 16th if they can recover from their shenanigans here in the 26th. I really love the idea of Mouse Sports kind of constantly throwing out a Scourge, you know, like a Baneling, just to try to get a kill, right? Just go out there and explode, maybe get one kill, see everything. And then if the T's had any plan coming out of spawn, it immediately has to change. Yep. And what more would stress Cloud9 up than having to change strategies after they've barely had any practice on any of their maps? 
Makes absolute sense. Start the fight with that straight jab. Okay, Jake Paul. <laughs> Yo, I could take him. <laughs> well, I'd pay to see that. Kerrigan's inside of this A site. The only player for most sports here. He's going to have to be a Claymore. Once they walk around this corner, he's going to have to take him down. Let's see if the T's are disjointed. It's perfect. Mezzi comes in right before Kerrigan was about to try and pop off. How about a 2v3 retake? It's been a little while. Four rounds in a row by way of elimination for most sports. We finally got Cloud9 looking to punish what was that wild aggression. Did they even take the chance? No, they're going to walk away from this. So Cloud9, they've got a 12th. Yeah. And it's for that reason that, yes, you know, we're trying to paint a picture of most sports victory moment, but this map is not over. Yeah, I mean, they got, they, like, I, a part of me feels like they, you know, you're, they're both so close, right, that there's, of course, hope for Cloud9 if they get a couple, a fortunate round here, a yeah. really strong round there. But the really strong round part is escaping me because it feels like Mouse Sports have a lot of strong answers at the moment for the early round engagements. And even when they're throwing what looks like a Hail Mary with a random push, they're using the information so well to activate ROPs on a push through halls or and even sometimes that player who goes down gets one kill, does tons more damage. Like the individuals are there, the game plan's there, Chris is popping off. It, it feels like it's a little bit too much to overcome. But who knows? 404 utility damage, standing far and above uh, uh, anyone else. Overall, utility damage not that high, I'd say, for this deep in the game on Inferno. But Carrion certainly doing his part. But let's see. They won that off of two really crazy Tech 9 kills up mid after a push. And the T's are starting to push up aggressively. And here, oh, wow, okay. There's, there's a game a point. Nice couple of nades there. 100 to 0. But they're not following up quite yet, which is interesting. Do we have a lane? Do we have a, a rooftop set up here? Or no, under balcony? Yeah, we've got the Virtus Pro set up on lane. All right, let's see it. They're going to go ahead and pop out from the apartments. This could be good for Cloud9. Floppy, he's got one and he's done. Alex trades it, then the mid peak's perfect. BMAS alleviated from the rooftops. Wow. Okay. A 13th round for Cloud9. Does this change your mind? Yeah, it actually does. This was such a cool round. I was think I did say earlier, like, maybe they should try to skip some of the map control part, do something a little bit more simple, like something to do with halls. And first of all, great tactic to get that first kill with the grenades. They don't even have to see anyone. They don't fight anyone in the top B area, which has not been going well for them. They don't mess with top mid control at all. And they have the hall split ready for when they put the pressure on B. So it looks like Mouse Sports, they have a bad setup, but at the same time, that was such an unlikely situation that Cloud9 would come out with the Hall's pop yep. right after they put so much pressure on B. So I don't blame them for being there. As full credit to Cloud9 on that one, that was a really, really nice call, I'd say. So now we've seen it, right? We've seen Rops get a little too aggressive in apartments two rounds prior. So we've seen maybe Mouse Sports extend into it, give a gift to Cloud9, let them on the scoreboard. And then one round later, we get exactly what we needed. A convincing decision from Cloud9. A round win based on their moves and not the mistakes of their opponents. The thing is, there's such a little margin left in this second map. Round 28 coming at you in a moment. And what are we going to get this time? Because it didn't look like Mouse Sports. We're going to take another one of those hyper-aggressive moves. But that's exactly what was taking rounds away from Cloud9. You offer them a bit of respect, and they come barreling out from those A apps. Both teams with the full-fledged buy. So what, I mean, Alex has been a clutch caller. What is the, what is, what is he going to try this time around? Are they going to try to go for a more standard affair and see if they can win around that way? Well, hey, Mouse Sports, they haven't pushed up B just yet. They're leaving top mid open. They're going for the late molly and they might push behind it. Okay, here's the re-aggression. Here's Huge the first fight. pass and the opening kill for Chris. He starts putting bullets down through the half wall. No follow up other than the first kill. Still a minute on the clock. Decent enough damage from that frag grenade off the skybox. What is their move? Huge round. Esetag looking to call out the coffin's position, but there's nobody actually there. We've got Chris J and Frozen far closer to the front line of this bomb site. It's going to be the 4v2 with the potential three-man retake. 
35 seconds, and here it comes from Cloud9. Molotov to the back of the site. The Opera's on the CT cross, and C9 are going to have to push through what is a whirlwind of smoke grenades. This is an awkward position, and time continues to tick. This is going to be left down to the wire. Frozen just takes back to Quad. He has support from Chris. Nice op shot to keep the edge in the hands of Mouse Sports, and Frozen whips it back. Every kill coming in for the CT side. A flawless 15th round. Yeah, that's it. it couldn't even be handled any better, really. That was just absolutely marvelous from Mouse Sports. And Cloud9 make the mistake of not committing through. They say, oh, let's just chill for a second. Kerrigan, yeah, he turns around. But look what happens to Mouse Sports setup. It evolves. Frozen says, oh, I don't have to stand out in the open anymore. You're giving me time. Goes back to quad. Chris J rotates around from CT instead of going for the Hail Mary peak because Frozen's, because Kerrigan's coming into refresh his spot. And here's the opening setup that punishes them too. They do everything absolutely perfectly. Full credit once again to Mouse Sports. And here's that late rotation. But at this point, the the key's already been turned. Like that is just a frag movie, basically. They had already won the round. And now it's a last ditch effort. 13 to 15. Cloud9 need to get fifth, get to OT just to get to a third map. Mouse Force can end it here and now. They lose the opening kill again to Chris. He has been impactful. He now ties BMAS at the top of the scoreboard for Mouse Sports. 21 kills to his name. And this op's gonna go hunting, but it's gonna get blinded, in fact. S-Attack, that's the support they needed. So many bodies for Cloud9 trying to overwhelm this site. They've got two members in the back of it. BMAS standing tall. Three kills for him. It's all on Mezzi, and he dies to the nade. Mouse Sports make it to the Blast Fall Final. What a win. Congratulations to Mouse Sports. That is an enormous victory. They take down the Colossus when the Juggernaut couldn't. What else is there to say? It comes close in the end, but they were clearly outclassed. Yes, it was only a couple rounds different. Maybe they could have gotten a little bit more lucky. That is Cloud9, but Mouse Sports, they deserved this win from every angle. Yeah, that they absolutely did. And you can see it, right? Starting to brim with confidence on that CT side, getting super aggressive. <laughs> Can't. Kerrigan absolutely earned, my friend. Uh, Mouse Sports are here to play. Like you said, even before this game, which is one where we thought, okay, maybe they just straight up take it, uh, the victory over Heroic is huge because that win over top of what was expected to be one of the best teams on this side of the event, that last minute stand-in that shook up the rest of the group. You know when Heroic were added to this tournament, everybody's just like, damn. Yeah. And yet, look who's qualified Damn. for the fall finals. I definitely doubted them, but I will no longer. They look amazing. Congratulations once again. All the pieces coming together.